Are we rolling, Ben? Okay, welcome back to part two of Wordplay 2. Uh, we'd like to, uh, to thank our friends at uh, Smart World and Chef Melody for all the delicious treats back there. I had a senior moment before. Of course, I meant to say the, the fine Newark artist, Charles Caldwell, is in here. Check out his work. Um, all right, so let's get started. So, our next poet uh, is a native of Newark. He also probably has the most poetic name here tonight, Fahim Nassim. He, uh, he had a passion for drawing as, a, as an infant, actually, and he went on to pursue art at Essex County College and Virginia Western Community College. Uh, his writing has helped him to overcome adversity throughout his life, and now art, writing, and his four children are the focus of his life. He says that it is my desire to inspire creativity and self-expression for all. Please welcome Fahim Nassim. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. My name is Fahim Nassim from Newark. This poem is inspired by true events, so um, bear with me. The name of this poem is called When My Daddy Comes Home. And it's in four parts from four different perspectives. My son, my daughter, my wife, and myself. Dear Daddy, I'm taking time to respond to your letter. At this time, I'm doing fine, but things could be a lot better. It's kind of hard when a son don't have his father around but I know that you would be here if you wasn't locked down. But you are, and as far as me and you still keeping in touch, I wouldn't mind, but daddy, please don't be expecting too much. He wasn't really there for me hey, since I was three. So as far as holding you down, don't expect it from me. You see, I've done a lot of growing ever since you've been gone. I'm in the girls, I'm in the sports. Man, the list just goes on. But you would know that if you took the time to be in my life. Would you prefer ripping and running on the streets living trife? Alone is your wife with three kids trying to raise on her own. And by the time you get released, Mina will almost be grown. But I love you and miss you, Dad. My heart's not made out of stone. I'd be so glad the day that I could say my daddy is home. Dear Daddy, I'm taking time to respond to your letter. At this time, I'm doing fine, but things could be a lot better. It's kind of hard when a girl don't have a daddy around. How do I deal with all these boys that are hounding me down? It's all so hard with all the time that we spent apart. Did I tell you that stupid dumped me and it broke my heart? Well, I'll never trust another because I'm way too smart. Maybe I should have tried a girl relationship from the start. No, I'm just joking, Daddy. Hope that put a smile on your face. I know you need some type of humor locked away in that place. A big part of me, me a big part of my life is missing because you wasn't there. But you spend time with all your other kids, and that's not fair. And neither is life. And now I have my own life to live. And by the time you get released, I be done had my own kids. Still what I wouldn't give for my daddy's hug, my daddy's love, my daddy's scent, my daddy's kiss. What I wouldn't give for my daddy's peace. What I wouldn't give to see my daddy released. To my husband. Just thought I'd try to send you some cheer. I'm constantly thinking about you and I keep you in prayer. This is just another example, nothing in life is fair. Now I have to bear the burden of raising the kids by myself. They try to keep up with their friends, but I'm not rolling in wealth. Every wish may not be granted, but I try to fulfill. I just paid the rent and paid the phone and the electric bill. The cable's about to get cut off, but that's not necessity. That's extra money you could probably use for commissary. Now listen at me. I'm worried more about you than me. But I know if it was you, you would do it for me. I asked the Lord to shelter us and to keep us from harm. Scared to death the other night somebody tripped the alarm. 
Newark's getting crazy about a day. You're not missing a thing, except Shaquan's taller than me and graduating this spring. God willing, you be home in time for all that. I'd be so happy today that I could say that you're coming back to my wife and kids. May this letter reach you in the best of health. It's hard to write, but I had to put my pride on the shelf and humble myself. I don't have an excuse for myself besides the fact that I really am ashamed of myself. Feels like I failed as a husband, father, and a protector. But while I'm in here, all that I can do is make the best of, of a bad situation. It's my obligation to make amends and to mend any broken fences and handle my business. For instance, all of my offenses, I would like to apologize with the deepest convictions, not to mention the fact that family should have been priority. I should have known to obey those in authority. So please pardon me for abandoning what my right hand possessed. And as long as this seven pounds beats deep in my chest, I now solemnly swear to you to do my very best to make it up to you if it's the last thing that I do. Inshallah, I'll make all these words true. And by the way, did you say that shower was taller than you? My hot time flies, and how I hate to say my goodbyes. How I hate when it's time to touch the glass, cause that's when you cry, and so do I. Although my tears are in the inside, I don't want to add to your sadness, so I hide them with pride. The devil, he lied. Who said a man is not supposed to cry? Who said a tear had to necessarily fall from your eye? I cry with my heart and soul. Tears flow through the hole of the quill. Letting this piece of paper know how I feel. Know that it's real. No, I don't have no more time to kill. I'm trying to come home so I can start to rebuild. Our happy home. Singing songs like daddy is home. I'd be so glad today that I could say that daddy is home. Thank you. Fahim Nassim. I talk about the power of words. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Is there a doctor in the house? And yes, not just a doctor of letters either. We have with us tonight a nephrologist. That's a hard one to rhyme. <laughs> he tells us that he was published years ago, and he saw the sign on the lawn on St. Peter's here and thought this would be fun. He writes about very eclectic subjects. Ghetto life, the Iron Curtain, Norse mythology. Please welcome, from Morristown, Dr. Earl Nielsen. So for the kids in the audience, or those that are young at heart, poetry is very easy. It's the easiest thing in the world. Just sit down and write it. Sometimes for young people, it's very hard to express yourself, hard to write things in prose, but you can sit down and write poetry. Life is poetry. So three little poems. Hard act to follow. This is from the other side. This is about a, a kid from the neighborhood in New York. High pockets my name, rappin's my fame. Can't hear nothing. Coke beepers bleeding, basketballs asphalt pounding, ghetto blasters jiving. Can't see nothing. Crackers gold chains gleaming. Dropped out a go. Got natural ability, Whitey says. Whitey's gone now. Took the jobs with him. Uncle Tom's gone to the burbs, forgot me too, all alone now, waiting for AIDS, waiting for a bullet. Statue of Liberty, what about me? So a land behind the Iron Curtain, a land without God. To the east, a metal curtain by ideas fresh is shattered weakened by a crack through which freedom bursts gleefully. Behind the curtain moves figurines in polluted mist of yellow clinging hands, strangling throats, gouging eyes, burning flesh, mists 
of acrid old ideas of party bosses, central planners, production quotas, decay dreams flowing as thick black water and streams of red foam in which dogs play stick. The workers eaten filled with queer babies crying cries of animals lost. Thins the mist and appears sad hot eyes of the dead screaming in their silence, a half a century wasted. And so this is a little, uh, my play on Scandinavian mythology, okay? Gulabrand is the name, the poem. High upon a mountain meadow lived the Norseman fair. Pure of heart and keen of mind, alone is he in his woodland lair. Eyes of steel, hair of gold, soul of silver untarnished, lives the spirit called Gulbrand, by some Viking king to this lay forever banished. Some say it was for jealousy, some say it was for deeds unspoken. Mere mortal man could not his plight endure. But here he reigns, heart unbroken. Cry not for him, ye earthbound sojourners, for he communes with Viking spirits from crusades of yore, his form entwined with nature so abundant, to glory in this land of ice and snow forevermore. That was Dr. Earl Nielsen, and I forgot to mention that tonight is his birthday. Karaoke night. Coming up, coming up next now, I'm very pleased to welcome back uh, someone who, uh, who gave a very wonderful reading last year. Uh, she knows Morristown history very well as the archivist at McCulloch Hall, two blocks that away. She's an expert on Greek poetry. She's written a novel in verse called Penelopeia. And I can't wait to hear what she has for us tonight. Please welcome Jane Rawlings. Wow, what an evening, all of you. Marvelous. I have three poems tonight. Have you ever stopped and thought about how often three seems like the perfect number in so many things? And I was struck with that when I decided I was going to read three poems. The first one I want to read is Quest. And in this poem, I have mixed time periods and uh, different cultures and civilizations. So. It'll be a little jumbled. Quest. Sunset. Silhouettes. Immobility of leaf. The tooth and notch. All delineation for the eye, while the sun, already sunk, subsides. The way August seeps into September. There is something happening something. We happen with it. Corset spiral. Flung curves, dips as children squeal with delight while elders plead for the mechanism to hold. So, to the seasons, affix millennia, months, and weeks. Invent from the tally of fingers Toes, pebbles as light years, shell heaps for nanoseconds, to fill reed baskets with them, to embark among the stars for some horizon, some fix. Next poem is titled, If a Wind Comes Up. I wrote this poem in the midst of a crashing rainstorm while staying at a friend's house on a steep mountainside. If a wind comes up, I will meet it. If a wind comes up, I will ride it on its own airs. 
astride the uplift and downdraft, whistle or moan. I will own the corners that it skirts and the hollows in its wake, what it carries, what it leaves behind, and what it casts aside on its way. I will forgive its lack of color, caprices, insouciance of light or dark, if not its disregard for the weak among the reeds it makes instrument. I will seek no frame to contain or define it. I will not ask its name. I shall not know it, except for what it is. By the way, my first poem was from this uh, most recent edition of Journal of New Jersey Poets, which comes out of the County College of Morris. And uh, every year they put out beautiful uh, poetry editions, and it would be good to sort of work, look at that for them on the web. And uh, there, I think the submissions go until September 1st or something like that. And then there's also a New Jersey Poetry Prize. And in this last poem, you'll hear my play on the expression deus ex machina. Are you familiar with that, people? It was an expression from Greek drama that has just come down to us over the years. Uh, and it was from the time when they actually somehow put together machines, machina, on which they would have the god sit and the god would come down into the Greek play uh, from, on this machine that they would trundle in. Oh, happy little machine that I am, keep these gears grinding, hinges oiled, timers ticking, armatures flexible, and above all, the springs wound and rewound, the dais of dust and rucks, X. <laughs> Jane Rawlings. Thank you very much, Jane. A couple more quick shout-outs here. We'd like to thank uh, Sean McMahon and Ellie McMahon for all their help in setting up today. Thank you very much. And also our thanks to Peter Moffat for all his help with the sound tonight. Okay. Our next poet is a Morristown resident who grew up in a family that spoke Italian only. We lived in a bubble, she said, and it made her feel a little bit inadequate when she started school. So she turned to poetry as a way to perfect her English. Now, she's an aspiring author and a life coach. Please welcome Sandra Spinella. Left 
in numbness, while the ground fruited an empty promise, left with an image, a dying wind that won't blow upward and won't settle in, hidden in between the spaces like something you feel and cannot see, hidden in his eyes as, his hint, as he handed his dreams to me. He wore his hair long so I could see him, as I remembered a bear had bitten me in a dream. He is a ghost like his people, unknown to the world, but not to me. This was for a friend. Shine your little light, bright. You always like to blow out. I mean candles in the wind when you left them open, remember? Remember your heart beat against the sound of the vibration. You, I mean, glow like the sun. You know much and know little that when you hear the voices from those who scream your name, you start to tremble from the stillness. Come find you in the silence when everything is breaking you. Shine off in the distance. They won't see you. For when you glow, you are quickly dulled by the blind brightness of which you know has always been there. This is an angry, angry college graduate not ready for the world. <laughs> I walk amongst the illusion like the wind that catches the polluted sky. Excuse me. Hair in my mouth does not work. <laughs> Start over. I walk amongst the illusion like the wind that catches the polluted sky. I drift searching for that something sticking in my eyes, blinded by vision, killing my sight, as I become the drifter, setting off for an ageless sun, I sit amongst my feelings fading within the lights. I wonder if I'm visible, blind inside the black. The blackness, coals that burn frozen within blurred vision, I've lost my sight, floating like a drifter as my spirit caught the sun. To be lifted like a leaf placed by the hand of fate, if only I could believe there was a reason for this game, this maze of wasted meanings, if only I could breathe, as the wind catches the polluted sky. Awesome. Prophecy. Please God, protect me as I walk down this dangerous road, narrowed by the disbelieving minds, as the golden swan unveils the truth beyond the shielded myths. I run into the cloud, hidden. I am looking for the promise, a sip of wine, a holding place. I'll always keep your secret safe, the covenant between me and you, or shall I say the holy truth, as the last tongue dries up deserts of faith, here in this Ethiopian dream, where once a kingdom sang songs of ascended kings, splitting palaces from a motherland, left me here with a bleeding hand. Where rivers have now dried up, leaving wells in places no one could see. Yes, the poor have the key. Fortunate are we that have enough, none. Freedom to those who possess nothing. Deep within the soul's knowing, as the peasant's tear becomes the crystallized diamond, as beauty hides in the eyes of the beholder, as he beheld you time and time again. So sip your wine and remember now. Now is the time. The soldiers raise their swords up to the sun. A cracked soil, a mission has begun. As it has been pa passed down again to the ones that hold the truth, the golden ring, an eternal promise of safekeeping in service to you. That was Sandra Spinella. Thank you very much, Sandra. Well, our next uh, poet works in the tax office of uh, Morristown, but we won't hold that against her. 
Uh, all this wonderful artwork you see around you here today, some 300 pieces of artwork, uh, had to be um, laid out and um, artistically arranged and curated. And so our next poet, um, not our, our next reader, um, put it all together as the curator of this wonderful show. Uh, and she's going to read uh, some prose for us tonight. So please give a, a nice warm welcome to Carol Linscog. It's not naughty. It's, it's not naughty. Honest, it's not. And 3 o'clock on Friday, after spending three days, Sharon and Melissa and Sean and myself and Ursula hanging all of these pieces of art, um, it was like, you know, Benedictus, no Domine. And I got thinking of Benny got all the dominoes, and I thought, oh my goodness, that reminds me of a very funny story of years back. Anyway, I've just called it in-reach, outreach, because it's kind of fitting with our um, surroundings here at St. Peter's. On one side of the street, there was a synagogue, and opposite was a Catholic church. The Catholic church was very busy on Sundays, people coming and going most of the day. Now, the rabbi at the synagogue decided to send one of his assistants over to the Catholic church to find out what they were doing to get so many people to come. And hopefully he could learn how he could build his attendance. The rabbi's assistant reported the following. Number one, when you enter the front door, some very nice people hand you a menu and tell you to sit wherever you want. (laughs) Number two, There were lots of colorful windows all around on the walls and a big table at the other end with flowers on it and pretty tablecloths. I looked at the menu they had given me, but I didn't know what language it was written in. And it had no prices on it, so I figured everything was probably free. (laughs) Then this lovely organ music started. They had the sound turned up pretty high because it was pretty loud and I couldn't tell where the speakers were. Then this whole group of people came walking down the middle from the front door, led by some guy carrying a cross and two little guys carrying candles on sticks next to him. The people following the guy with the cross were all singing. I think they must have been all the same family because they were all dressed the same with long black dresses that had white smocks over them. Then at the end of the line was a guy with colorful sashes over his dress. He obviously was the boss. When they got to the table at the other end, the music stopped and they all sat down on the right side and the left sides of the table. Then the boss stood in front of the table and began talking. I don't know language, again, I didn't know what language it was. Now, the people sat down and a couple of guys came along with baskets to collect money. That's when I realized they were all betting. I put a buck in the basket. People sat down. Oh, then the people in the church were standing up, then kneeling down while the boss was talking very confusing to me. Then two little guys with red dresses and white smocks began to help the boss in front of the table. There must have been something on the floor because every time they went from one side to the other, they were tripping on something. (laughs) The boss turned to all of us sitting down and said, come take and eat. The people closest to the table went first. By the time I got to the table, They only had these little pieces of cardboard left. And they they didn't taste very good, but they were free. All the people returned to their seats, and the music started again. That family that came in first singing stood up and again followed the guy with the cross and his helpers. They went back to the front door of the church, followed by the boss man. The music stopped, and the boss said, Benny got all the dominoes. So I, so I knew then that I didn't win. Everyone said, oh, 
10, and they left the church smiling. Amen. <laughs> that was Carol Linsky. Our next poet is also a member here at St. Peter's where she is the co-chair of the Hospitality and Fellowship Committee and a member of the Outreach Committee. And she's also an accomplished photographer who will be on exhibit um, for the Morristown Art Walk this weekend. Uh, please welcome to the microphone, Isabel Creighton. This is a little poem that I put together while I was playing kids, saying, can we leave yet? Can we leave yet? My husband was in the other room doing work on the laptop for his office, and I just wanted to get to the ocean. Can we leave yet? And he said, will you just go do something? Go write something. So I did. This is my observation of the beach at four different times of the day. The morning. The sun is just coming up over the horizon. The sun is soft, pink becoming more infused with bright pink as the big yellow ball becomes more visible. The water is very flat. The seagulls are swooping and diving at the gentle rollers as the waves prepare to break at the water's edge. A small white sail appears on the horizon. A sailor out for an early morning run with the wind at his back. At the inlet, the fishing boats churn the water as it plows through rolling waves, leaving the safety of the harbor to move into the ocean. Fishermen ready for another day of casting nets and pulling in their catch. The beach is empty. The tall lifeguard chairs are pulled to their resting place, far back from the high tides of the overnight. The sand is smooth, waiting for another day of activity. The boardwalk is deserted, except for the seagulls pecking bits of cast-off breadcrumbs from last night. All you can smell is fresh, salty air. All you can hear is the call of one seagull to another, and the gong of the one-mile buoy. Noon. Overhead, the sun is white hot. The sky is clear blue. White puffy clouds on the horizon won't offer shade today, at least not at this beach. The water is churned up. The wind is coming from the east, and the waves are getting bigger. Boats of all sizes racing up and down the coast, fishing boats drifting, their lines cast into the water, waiting for the fish to bite. The inlet is choppy, full of small boats, racing and rushing into the ocean. The beach is crowded. Lifeguard chairs are at the water's edge. People are lined up at the water, some swimming, some getting hit with the mist from breaking waves. Bright colored umbrellas dot the beach. Towels are spread. People are lying down, reading, sleeping. The boardwalk is full of people, walking, eating, talking, with sounds of amusement rides, laughing children, restaurants with tempting smells filling the air. Sunscreen fragrances mingle with cooking smells. On the beach, all you can hear is music blasting from radios, people talking, children laughing, seagulls calling, fighting over breadcrumbs, and waves crashing at the shoreline. Then it's the evening. The sun is setting, a huge red ball in the west. The sky is turning soft gray, showing signs of night approaching. The water is black, rough, driven by strong easterly winds making the waves crash on shore. Dim lights twinkle on the horizon from the commercial fishing boats and tankers heading to port. The inlet is quiet. Rolling waves ride forward in toward the harbor. On the jetty, people are sitting, watching, waiting. People taking one last walk on the beach at the water's edge, splashing the surf while white foam rolls up the beach toward lifeguard chairs, which have been pulled back to their resting place. The boardwalk is bright with colored lights. Amusement rides go round and round. Bells ring, people laugh, children squeal and run. The air is heavy with the smell of cooking food, popcorn, and salty ocean spray. All you can hear are the sounds carrying over from the boardwalk, music and laughter. The midnight. The sky is black. Stars are visible here and there. The moon is a silver white disc moving across the sky. The water is rough, silvery white caps dancing with moonlight as big rolling waves crash onto the beach, leaving thick white foam behind. Two short lines of lights appear on the horizon, signaling tankers or fishing boats headed for who knows where. 
Water in the inlet is roiled with waves, breaking on the jetty and rolling into the harbor area. There are no boats heading to the ocean. The beach is empty again. The sand is rough, evidence of activity during the day. The lifeguard chairs are pulled back, returned to their place of safety. The boardwalk is deserted, lights gone out, music quieted, cooking smells blown away. All you can smell is the salty air. All you hear is the gong of the one mile buoy. That was Isabel Creighton. Thank you, Isabel. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. Coming up, uh, we have a poet who has been writing poems for 25 years. Not continuously, right? But uh, she has published two volumes of poetry, the most recent one being Over Easy, which traces the, her journey to a wonderful life. She's a member of the International Women's Writing Guild, a board member of Women Who Write, and she hosts Poetry and Pastries at the Cafe Beethoven in Chatham for the last eight years. Please welcome Marsha Ivins. Thank you. That uh, Poetry and Pastries is open to anybody who wants to come to read. Everybody reads who wants to. Um, someone had written about the trouble of uh, beginning of writing. So, I wanted to add my two cents into that. This is called Hidden Feelings. Write the words, bring them out from the back of your mind where they are hidden from view, hidden from sound. Don't dare speak them or they will become reality. <laughs> Upside down, trees, grass, and flowers rooted strongly in the earth, unafraid to grow tall and straight. Look up at the clouds. Why do they appear to float downwards with nothing to connect them to the soft blanket of sky? I can't see what's keeping them from falling. If the sky wasn't upside down, how tall would the clouds grow? <laughs> This Cayman is not an island. She is a beautiful new puppy. Rusty, colored, fluffy hair, spirited, loves to chase after toys thrown by loving children. She's trained to rub her nose against the bells hanging from their patio door, to signal when she needs to go out, or when she wants to play with children in the backyard, or chase another dog. It's sometimes hard to understand her bell ringing. I just took her out, and she did what she had to do. I watch my grandchildren reach for the first jacket they see, never their own, just the one they could grab with the most speed. She's very lovable. Be careful where you put your shoes. She loves to chew them. Nip, nip, chew, chew, run, run. Cute little puppy. <laughs> Painted hair. I woke this morning to a big surprise. When I looked in the mirror, it seemed that sometime during the night, unbeknownst to me, someone came and gleefully painted pieces of my hair gray. <laughs> the blonde is still there, but the portions that were once a deep, rich brown have streaks of age. When I look closely into a magnifying mirror, through eyes not as clear as they once were, I saw strange lines running wild on my face. Not gray, but etched into the skin. I don't think they were there yesterday. I will not look at a full-length mirror today. I don't want to see what those someones did to the rest of my body. <laughs> Gray stripes and etched lines are enough. <laughs> and I'll just leave you with a, a small note. Don't. You can mess with my heart. 
You can mess with my soul. You can mess with my mind. But don't mess with my hair. <laughs> Thank you. That was Marsha Ivan. Thank you, Marsha. Our penultimate poet is coming up next. She is a dance movement therapist. She works with children with special needs at Morristown Medical Center. Please welcome Jerry Silk. Does penultimate mean I just won't quit? It's the only rhyme I can think of. Okay, these are two poems. Um, I was talking with Dr. Nielsen and we were trying to find a poem that wasn't always depressing. <laughs> so this is one. It was for a woman who wants to design, um, she's a bookmaker and she wanted words that would look really good on the paper. So this one is called A Poem for Claire. Clairvoyant Claire of the Claire de Lune wakes up and comes out of her room, goes for a walk under the springtime moon, sings herself a springtime tune. Wondering what rhymes with June, the smell of jonquils make her swoon, selects her favorite silver spoon to drink jasmine tea at high noon. In her garden appears a loon, declaring it will be summer soon. This one isn't quite so happy. Um, I, I was still haunted for a while about Katrina, the hurricane, and the injustice of it. And I actually designed this as a ballet. It's very clear. So if you want me to tell you what the ballet looks like, <laughs> this poem is called Sweet Katrina. I guess you could make a, a pun on the word sweet and sweet, but it's just by this guy, OK? Have you seen my sweet Katrina? Have you seen her? floating by. Let me find my girlfriend's body. Give me wings to fly. Hey, Mr. Helicopter Man, swing low. Let me find my baby tonight. They named a storm after her for the love that raged in my heart. My love rages onward for her soul. City morgue, it wasn't pretty. Now her name is hated pain. Though I saw her from the rooftop floating in Ophelia's dream, how her hair hung free, rivulets of hair. In the river of pain, first she'd sink, then she'd surface again. How her hair wings free, swings down. See, helicopter man, swing down so low. I can see my baby, my baby below. Clutched, clutched her kitten snowball by her side, sleeping through the night. Her body lay atop a pile of stories, other stories, full of garbage, full of bones, full of pain. She came to rest upon a jetty, all broke up and gone. Now your name is hated, now your name is feared. Soon your ghost is feared, just a little breath, just a little rain, just a little wind, just a little tear. When she reaches for her sweet kitten, then I almost let her go, but she slipped right through my fingers in a way I can't explain. Set my setting low, swing low, O oh New Orleans. I could hear the squeal of kitten, memory of the softened, locked in my baby's arms. Little Snowball loved her mother so, like Ophelia on the moon. Kitten jumped into the water, jumped into the murky brine, let my baby go. She slipped through my fingers so, helicopter screaming, making the waters targets, cyclones, tornadoes. The next time I saw her was in the city morgue. She was flattened, green, and thin and pale. Snowball nestled by her side, barely breathing. She loved that kitten so. And I loved her with a love that would make the waters part. Please, Mr. Helicopter Man, Helicopter Man, won't you please slow down, swing low. Her hem caught on a tree, dress full of yellow flowers, and she swirled round and round, torn by the storm. The water brought my baby down, mitten the kitten, white as snow, brave the meow for my girlfriend, his mama's life, floating toward the moon high in the trash. Oh, but she ain't there no more. I was going to make her my wife, dead and full of swamp water. Oh, my city, the dungeon of no dungeons of New Orleans keep my baby's soul. Her name is hated like the devil, not the sweetness of her breath. Her kitten snowball drowned like a rat. My city, New Orleans, keeps my baby's soul. Keep in your baby's dreams by namesake of my baby. Now a dreaded, hated storm cannot steal my love from my sweet Katrina's arms. Oh, what's in a name that can create so much pain? 
The dungeons of New Orleans keep my baby's soul. Her name hated like the devil, dropped her body in a hole. Jetty, broken, spoken, token, shattered pride, pain inside, whole, coal, toll, mole, roll. In the city morgue, it wasn't pretty, just another dead and gone. Sure weren't no time for pity, stuck a label on her toe. What's in a name that inspires hatred when I loved her sweetness so? She screeched across the rooftops for her kitten, and by the chances, I let her go. She swirled by bedside me, at first struck upon a tree. I started to jump after, but she waved her hand at me. Don't jump, don't jump, my darling, cause I see you in the end, where the water's parting. That will be our end. Just watch the water as it will part, will part us, but we'll be together in the end, and come together at the bend. So I watched, I looked to see her, and saw no struggle, but her neck snapped just like a twig, that awful sound parted forever. And that's the last time I saw her. I saw her slip away. She rushed Eddie down headward. She rushed away like magic held under by the storm. Hey, helicopter man, don't you see me? You seem so damn aloof. I'm up here crying and screaming. I'm standing on the roof. The pilot swung down to get to seize me. He first threw me, threw me a rope. His breath froze like an icicle. I seized a ray of hope. I saw her tattered body wedged inside a tree on top her little kitten was trying to break free. Her name was Sweet Katrina, whose skin was white and pure. Here's no justice for all this martyr, only love and memory. Not a million constellations can bring her back to me. She died on television, a sight for all to see. Her dead and mangled body struck fast into that tree. She died a violent death, and now her memory softens. Sometimes she comes to me. I hear her name called often, but only in misery. That was sad. <laughs> that was Jerry Silk. Thank you, Jerry. All right. Our final... <laughs> our final act deserves no introduction. It's me. We definitely did not save the best for last. <laughs> I'm, I'm only here because it's not fair to ask uh, others to do what you wouldn't do yourself. And so I should say that uh, my first attempts at poetry were not critical successes. Uh, back in the sixth grade, there was this one. I hear a crackle in the snow. I must be careful where I go. There may be a VC in a tree just itching to take a shot at me. Imagine my dismay when that paper came back from the teacher all marked up in red, and she informed me that the Viet Cong are not generally regarded as alpine warriors. <laughs> uh, usually we blame our parents for our shortcomings. Um, I blame mine for not sharing their poetry gene with me. Uh, let's fast forward to high school. Uh, my mom's high school, uh, my mom who, uh, who passed away last month, uh, got an honorable mention for this poem when she was in high school, and it's titled, uh, Beauty. What beauty doth my soul require to make it leap with joy? The earthly cares, the heaven's tears, spring's maiden look of innocence, a cooling zephyr that deigns to caress the parched and sun-dried meadow ruffles the leaves by its gentle kiss and whispers of better tomorrows. A gaily bubbling silver stream winding its way down a mountainside winks its eye at the smiling sky and happily murmurs in clear-throated song. With graceful move movements, a billowy willow reaches heavenward nearer his maker, tall as a spire and as finely carved, enveloped by the proudly shining stars. My heart could but burst when the creations of God beguile, bewitch, and bewilder my soul, unfurling their charms in such endearing delights to so unworthy a creature as I. I'd like to close with um, another important literary influence. This will require... Huh? <clears throat> Thank you.
Uh, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Groucho wrote this one uh, for uh, his, uh, the Broadway play Animal Crackers. He needed to kill some time while they were changing sets. And he was always uh, astounded that the tourists and the audience took him seriously. Did you ever sit and ponder as you walk along the strand that life's a bitter battle at the best? And if you only knew, if you only knew it, you would lend a helping hand, then every man could meet the final test. The world is but a stage, my friend, and life is but a game, and how you play is all that matters in the end. But whether a man is right or wrong, a woman gets the blame, and your mother is your dog's best friend. <laughs> then up came Mighty Casey and strode up to the bat, and Sheridan was 50 miles away. For it takes a heap of lovin' to make a home like that on the road to where the flying fishes play. <laughs> so thank you to everyone who's come to Wordplay 2 tonight. It's been a wonderful evening. You've all been terrific. Thanks so much. And drive home safely. Hope to see you next year.